Hello, I am Prabhu Chavla. Welcome to e-expression, a digital platform from the New Indian Express Group for discussing, debating, and finding solutions to many complex issues faced by the country. Today, we are here to discuss and dissect ninth budget of the Modi government, jointly hosted by the Confederation of Indian Industry and the New Indian Express. The topic for today is budgeting for India's decade. And we have a very special panel of prominent industry giants and thinkers. We have with us here today in the studio, Uday Kotak, President CII, Venu Srinivasan, Chairman TBS Motor Company, Sanjeev Bajaj, Vice President CII, Chairman and Managing Director of Bajaj Financial Services Limited, Chandrajit Banerjee, Director General of the CII. Thanks, gentlemen for joining to discuss the budget today. First, I'll ask the CIA president and the famous banker, Uday, you tell me one thing which you expected has not happened in the budget. No increase in taxes. That was a surprise or so you, you well, expected that? Of, yes. there, was, there was a concern that there could be a COVID tax or something like that. The, no, the, 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 the finance minister surprised us with no increase in taxes. Oh, there's a cess on agriculture development on the petroleum that, product. That's it. That you are happy anyway. It doesn't affect you. No, anyway. I, I'm, not, I, I'm just saying in general, the, the, gov, the budget has ensured a continuity and stability on taxation policy, which is extremely important. And there was concern that there could be some increase in taxes. So that is a positive surprise. So that is one thing you expected. It has not happened. There no taxation at all. Yes. Venu, is that the surprise for you? You expected this? Well, I think uh, the big thing that happened in this budget is the focus on CapEx. No, no, Venu, and... I'm asking you one thing which you did not expect, which you expected and not happened. Which I expected. I did not have much expectations for the budget. I was just <laughs> waiting to see because we are coming off COVID with huge deficits. And uh, they said it was going to be a path-breaking budget. So, frankly, I could not say what expectations I had. I was waiting to see what the budget of the century would look like. And you, you tell us, you expected something which has not happened? So, Prabhu, from CII, we gave a large set of recommendations, and there were some major set of recommendations. When I take a look at them, the one word which has not happened is nothing. <laughs> uh, all our significant uh, recommendations have been uh, considered and uh, and that's why uh, we are all uh, uh, very positive on this budget. No, that is expected. I, I want a very specific thing from all of you, one by one, from the CII perspective, different. But individually, as, as an entrepreneur on your own right, I expected that each one of you will have some kind of a priority which you are expecting from the government has not happened. But I think you're hedging your bets on that because you have expected a policy continuity that stability, which is a new jargon I've heard this time. But all the time you have been asking for some changes in the tax structure. And this time Modi and Mr. Prime Minister disputed today also. One good thing about this is that there's no taxation. But that's okay, I can affect you. But another thing which, I, which everybody has asked you, but I want to ask you again, I hope you will not repeat it. One thing Uday, which think is the best in this budget. Don't say tax stability, that you have told me. I think the best thing about this budget is a very significant disclosure of a mindset which is pro-private sector enterprise and pro-markets. The budget has been very clear about the direction in which this government wants to take the destiny of India in the years to come. And the value of this is more than anything written on a piece of paper. It is changing the perspective that India is open to take calls for reform, even if it means some bets of higher borrowing in the short run for going out there, respecting markets and respecting private enterprise. That is the biggest message and signal I read from the budget. Recognizing the wealth creator, which Mr. Modi used to call last year, he said, I welcome wealth creators and want to encourage them. Across the board, small, big business, go out there. We are with you. 
take the risk create enterprise create jobs as you create enterprise then you know, what was your good thing in this one thing you said you're not expecting one anything, but... thing is investment in capital expenditure and infrastructure for years we've been crying horse that capital expenditure should be increased they brought down revenue deficit and increased capital expenditure this is the best thing for the future because continued investment in infrastructure is necessary to grow our economy and make it more competitive yeah sanjeev with the big emphasis on the real economy to me the one thing is the significant uh, focus on strengthening the financial services sector which has to support the real economy so whether it's the announcement of the development financial institution whether it is the bad bank ala the arc the amc the divestments that they've talked about uh, in the two public sector banks and one general insurance company and lic's ipo all very significant announcements and as we see their execution this will play a, a big role not only the next year but in the next many years to support our um, economic growth can you from the cii perspective what do you think the one good thing you have given so many memorandums i know hundreds of them must have gone so actually you know uh, the delight was to see this in a phenomenal focus on growth uh, and i think that's that's some, something which was extremely important the government has betted on growth and which has been across the spectrum of the budget we we when we talk about that there was no raise in tax uh, 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 one did not raise the taxes etc so everywhere you see is betting on growth and the boldness with which it is done boldness it is talked for the privatization say for instance it is talked for the first time we have heard about disinvestment in the past but going through talking this this boldness both in terms of the the, the reforms and the betting on growth are 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 a phenomenal aspects of the budget and i see that cutting across the, the entire of the budget speech uh, it, it it shows government's uh, uh, you know uh, uh, commitment towards uh, not only uh, as uday mentioned pro market but i thought it is it is also really focused on betting on the uh, and very confident that yes uh, one big thing that needs to now happen is of course implementation but in that that we can make these statements and we will keep our target strong let's not get worried about fiscal deficit let's put in our best to see to it and money will come in and i think that's a huge huge uh, boldness uh, in reforms and you asked as to what we have not seen in the budget i would think uh, while while many many things have been uh, we had asked it was a lot a huge uh, list of expected things and we were ticking tick marking and we tick marked almost all boxes that we had asked for but yes uh, there is um, you know at this point in time there are certain sectors which has been crying uh, which is the uh, hospitality and the tourism sector probably they expected something for in their basket for themselves the civil aviation sector they wanted something for their uh, for, for their i would have also thought you know something coming in in terms of uh, you know one big announcement which was pending which we keep asking and i think some of these can come outside of the budget by the way everything need not be in the budget but some important thing was there is a huge amount of bill spending with a, with a, with a, and payment pending for the private sector we have been pushing for those to be sort of uh, paid up so there are a few things we will keep talking i guess about those ones you see as a journalist i have been covering parliament and the budget for almost 40 years is the first time i am hearing industry speak leaders not speaking about deficit they have always been speaking control deficit budget control deficit reduce it to under the 3% 4% suddenly all of you are saying no it is a good thing to have a deficit budget what change your mindset suddenly in 30 39 budget if i read out the statement of all the past cii presidents i have just read it some of them i don't want to quote them so that will be embarrassing because all of you have been talking about with all of subsidies and control deficit financing suddenly why you find deficit financing now the new panacea for some kind of a growth today because you raised yeah. this question yeah prabhu i think uh, we have got to also look at the sign of our times we are coming out of a pandemic where i think the government of india needed to support lives and livelihood and the government of india did it that increased the deficit we are just coming out of this pandemic at a time like this if we suddenly tighten fiscal deficit to the pre covid mindset it would not be appropriate for an event which has happened once in 100 years which is this pandemic 
And therefore, at CII, we had recommended a glide path towards normalization of deficit over three years. We are what the finance minister has come out with is a glide path over a four-year period, which is between three and four, not a major change, but it is consistent with what we felt was the right way to do. Yes, the deficit for the year ended March 21, based on budget estimates, is higher than what some of us, or most economists were saying. They were yes. expecting around 7.5% of GDP for March 21. It has turned out to be 9.5%. But Prabhu, what I would give a lot of credit is for the first time we have got to a very high level of transparency in our financial numbers. And you know, I must say that whether you talk to investors, analysts, economists, they give a huge value to transparency in the functioning of a company or a country. And they were coming out and saying, I will not have food subsidy and other things outside the budget, bringing it inside the budget, which is another 1.6% of GDP. Therefore, 9.5% has to be adjusted for it. Similarly, next year, 68 also, there is no hidden outs of balance sheet items. Therefore, you are, you are getting what you are seeing. There was some of the deficit increase has happened because of transparency. That deficit was always there. It was not being shown. We are seeing, we are getting the mirror to see where we are. I'll come out with this. What are the hidden facts? Where are they in the fine print? I'll just point out one by one after little one. Yeah. Them. Because yes. what happened, I just you want to wait at straight in the beginning, the first time there's a private sector encouragement, there's industry encouragement. Yes. That I could see that shares um, private investor capital growth went up by five lakh crore rupees in one day. All of you shareholders who own the company got five lakh crore rupees extra by the stock market. Whether the lower middle class did not get a single penny in the budget. That is what was expected because they are not they are select sector the same. This, as you rightly pointed out, is a growth-oriented budget. There is a direction in this. I can see that. But growth depends on creating actual demand in the hands of the poor and middle-class people. When what you see, but is how it is going to generate or escalate the demand part of it, which all of you are looking for. Ultimately, your profit or bottom line or budget balance sheet will survive on the basis of more demand. I saw your balance sheet were published in the your this quarter loss, last quarter loss or less than the previous quarter. In, in fact, if I look at that. So how you look at the budget in terms of stimulating demand in the in the in the rural area and other I think uh, Prabhu, one thing that we have not done over many years is the focus on infrastructure. We've been slowly disinvesting. Now we move to privatizing, which is a very solid thing. But ultimately, demand has to come from building infrastructure. You've seen it in China. The entire Chinese economy is based on excellent investment in infrastructure, which also reduces the cost of moving goods, uh, having more electricity available. So we are, for the first time, seeing a huge boost in investment. And I think it's a very positive thing. And as Uday said, I think a transparent budget with the fiscal deficits being shown to be what they actually are and allocating more for capital and less for revenue. I think this is the right way to go. Stock market reacts. Stock markets are ephemeral. It goes up one day, it goes on one day. So saying 5 lakh crores, we have not got 5 lakh crores in a bank account. It is in a piece of paper and tomorrow it may go down. Feel good factor that I am richer by so much. Sir. Yeah, there's a feel good factor and it will go down to everybody. <laughs> Ultimately, businesses do well, economy does well, we will, uh, as a country, do well and people will get more. You see, as, as a good point, I'll take that point forward. Transparency, for example, you talked about the first time we are seeing transparency. Sanjeev is a finance person, he runs a big finance successful company also. I'm going to ask him. That how is it transferred when the deficit the gap between the expenditure and the income, which is projected in the budget, is through 12 lakh crore rupees? Did you find, tell me which way, because they are saying some bad bank, I don't know whether bad bank is a bad idea or a good idea, because there is discussion about that. They are talking about disinvestment of privatization to banks and one PSU, maybe LIC, ITO is coming. Do you think this 12 lakh crore rupees without taxation anywhere, where is this hit? I can't find in the transparency factor where it is coming from. You have read the budget, more detail. No, so the transparency, as Uday said, is in including a lot of the off-balance sheet 
expenditures this time into the main numbers and uh, the transparency is in the disclosure the execution now will be on the basis of the spends which will initially start from the government in various uh, sectors of infrastructure which should help to create jobs that coupled with the fact that in, uh, we are at the better end of the pandemic right now uh, as long as we can ensure quick vaccination across the country uh, it will help in getting consumer confidence back that will start the consumer demand cycle which means then as capacities get uh, utilized private sector starts investing again and you end up creating a whole virtuous cycle this cycle see as you know the deficit is an issue of numerator and denominator this cycle aims to build on the economy expand the denominator and get the numerator down the only other theoretical way is by contracting the economy get the numerator down but that in most cases has never been shown to help in meeting the fiscal deficits and i'll make one more point we must keep in mind we are not like the western world uh, which is a developed world all infrastructures by and large in place so that's a working capital economy we are very much a capital investment economy we where we need to invest in the uh, infrastructure to build our future so some deficit not any deficit but some deficit is uh, understandable and acceptable and as uh, uh, venu mentioned also it is not just the size of the spend the quality of the spend is very important so we have to see that the spend goes into capex into infrastructure because then it has long lasting multiplier effect on economic growth no well, i get the point i am asking you where the money will come from transparency in terms of revenue coming forward if there is some generic statement that we will sell this and we will sell this how will the 12 lakh rupees which you are talking about in such a way you have to spend okay by selling the family silver which is every will be everything will be sold according to the budget the spirit of the budget that we will sell sell and sell whether there is a buyer or not we don't know because we have been trying to sell for the last past 12 almost 12 or 14 years this investment targets have never been met in by any government whether this government or the earlier government so the track record of disinvestment is very poor that is in something when i am asking you all of you Chandji, you may be able to answer this question. Where will this 12 lakh rupees gap, which is happening for this venture, for infrastructure, which we know you're talking about, you have to build roads or airports or the health sector or whatever you want to do, schools or colleges. Infrastructure means labor intensive. I assume that infrastructure means labor intensive labor structure where you get the money in the hands of people and they spend and buy a new scooter or buy something financed from Chandji or go to the bank of Uday Potter to get some money. Where will this money come from? Twelve lakh crore rupees. Can you give me some idea? Because I have been finding answer for this question, I have not been able to get it myself. Twelve lakh crore rupees. Where will it come from? So I think, uh, as as I mentioned at the outset, uh, you know, the budget has really betted uh, very strongly on growth. And of course, you you yourself spoke about disinvestment and privatiz privatization. And 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 uh, yes, the track record uh, has been, but this is a very bold one, and that, and I see. Uh, the, uh, uh, and there is a need today, and that need itself will, I think, get uh, help the implementation of it. But three critical areas of immediate intervention for deepening the recovery and uh, catapulting, so to say, to a high growth orbit are really demand generation, both consumption and investments, improving credit availability, and employment generation. And I think uh, the first two uh, benefits, uh, 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 I mean, industries across the segments and sectors. And the third is the most effective way, if one can say, of ensure, ensuring an inclusive growth. But having said that, the budget proposal provide a big boost to all the three critical areas that I mentioned, and it is it's also simultaneously uh, displays very strong um, fiscal management and ensuring macroeconomic stability. And it it really also sets sets the tone for the big big ticket reforms. And all of this together, if you see, uh, really brings in that 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 phenomenal focus on growth. And that's how I guess the government is betting on it to see that that we are able to uh, uh, we are able to finance that uh, the finance that deficit that you are talking about. So I no, think so, that betting so, on so growth is right. very intent, very important. Intent point. and intention of the budget and spirit of the budget, nobody can question the six principles which financial and financial They are very well. But the question is, as you look at the past, I am again repeating start in ninety eight ninety eight railway decided to monetize its land bank. 25 years later, we are still not able to raise in 1,000 crore rupees. 
the value of that land bank is more than 1 million, 11, 10 lakh crore rupees. So I'm just saying the money has to come because when we were teacher of economics and student of economics, we were told supply pays to come demand. Supply has been creating demand till, till a couple of years ago. Now demand has to create the supply. But demand, I just want to know because as a consumer, if middle class and lower middle class doesn't get the money in their hand, taxation structure buying what it is, how do you do it? And the other thing is that you're talking about big growth budget, I'm just looking at the figures again, budget figures, you know the last final figures of the 2021 20, 20, expenditure estimates, actual 34.5 lakh crore, correct me Uday, if you have read it, 34.5 lakh rupees was actual expenditure by 31st March 2021. And estimated budget for the next year, 34 lakh, 48 lakh, 34.48. Where is the expenditure? I think, Prabhu, you've really obviously got your facts on your fingertips. Here is what I would like to say. Well, the expense is wrong. Which your last year, what you I'm, spent I'm at the same level you're going to do? I'm coming to that. First, you know, we are all uh, we, we are all in our ways. We run our businesses, our companies. And in many ways, what is true for a company is true for a country. Correct. There has to be a strategy and there has to be a roadmap and there has to be execution. So what this budget has very well done has got the strategy and the roadmap in front of Correct. us. It is now, as we all know, when we run our companies, the heart of the sustainable success is execution. And we would like to support the government as the government goes down a very strong execution plan which is needed in the years to come. And let me take you back to Margaret Thatcher, 1980. She yeah. changed the UK with the passion, purpose, and surgical execution of their privatization plan. That is what I think India has to embark upon with a certain vigor and a rigor. And I hope that is something which we see in the next 12 to 24 months. So that is point number one. Point number two on total expenditure. As Venu rightly said, and Sanjeev corroborated, what we are doing is we are shifting from revenue expenditure to capital expenditure. Capital expenditure. And that is a quality of expenditure which is very important. Therefore, you kept the budgeted expenditure under control by reducing the wasteful expenditure, which we may call as revenue expenditure in some cases, okay? And moving it to CapEx, which will give sustainable real assets on the ground for future generations. One of the worries each of us should have is that when we borrow, we are borrowing from the future generations. It is our duty to ensure that the borrowing is well used for returns which the future generations get. And that can only happen if we invest the borrowed money into right assets which generate returns over decades in the future. That is how we protect future generations, Prabhu. Well, you are a good banker. I, you have raised a very fundamental question. You are borrowing for a future generation from 98 or only 91 when the reform started. Borrowing of the government has been increasing every year to meet the capital expenditure and the revenue, whatever you're talking about. Government will have to raise 3,500 crore rupees per day. And the cost of borrowing it, that you are leaving the next generation of minor years under debt for many, many more decades because Paying for the debt, you are spending almost 40% of your revenue on debt and, and services alone. And it is going after year after year. This time is 21% debt in servicing. Last two years ago, it was 18%. Before that, it was 15%. So debt servicing has been going because you're not repaying the debts which you are raising. 3,500 crore rupees you will borrow from somewhere. Obviously, the cost of borrowing will also bring down the growth because it will be heavy cost to be paid for development. When, what do you answer? How do you answer this question? Uh, the answer should be coming from where we invest. In the past, budget deficits have been giving away revenue expenditure, which does not get us any return. I think for the first time, you're seeing a qualitative difference that the expenditure is focused on CapEx. And the more we focus on CapEx, and there are more areas, you know, privatization we're talking about, what about water? What wastewater that we throw out in India can have 
there is enough water for all the cities in india but we do not recycle practically any water except in chennai 30% but even 70% goes into the sea i think if we invest in, in infrastructure that has got an economic payback then you will be able to recover your money and reduce your uh, interest or serve debt service expenditure but as long as we've been spending more and more on revenue there is no return and that's where we are today and i think this is a major change in the direction of the country in this budget towards long term having solid capex and a return which is what industry also does so this is when the question which i am looking at again the, my favorite subject is stock market comes back for 90% of your fdi last year came into only hot market stock market which is non productive return which has nothing to do with the real growth so if that kind of foreign investment is running into billions and billions of dollars coming in investment possibilities in the real estate you are talking about infrastructure so there is some kind of mixed ma- mismatch in our our funding process fund coming from outside and internal resources which we generate for investing in real infrastructure because fdi is not coming into infrastructure at all as you go by the last year figures in pandemic when the entire country entire world was going down the stock market was going up there is something which economics have not read in my life so there must be something very hot there happening but infrastructure is good idea it is a very good thing that they are going to spend more money on capex and on infrastructure but basic thing started how you will raise the demand which all of you will almost benefit from there because you have to inequalities of income is already known so the top 1% to 2% people are getting about 80% benefit so where is the demand which is the mass demand which is rural demand how will it come from this budget after budget now you look at china look at emerging markets i think sanjeev made the point we are not a working capital economy we are a ca- economy that does require infrastructure infrastructure means ex- the use of labor capital and a trickle down effect and we will have economic growth and the lower down in the economy people will get the money to spend so you have to have the commitment as we do in corporates when we spend on capex we expect a return and that return is plowed back into growing the company i think the same is true of our economy uh, but that happens in the in the private company yes they plow back the profit into the company expansion and diversification what happens but in terms of government this has not happened technology wise we are very important uday i just want to go back to the basic nuts and bolts of the of the of the budget they are talking about two private banks will be nationalized do you have any idea about this you oh, may be buying think- one of them no prabhu i think you got to really look at again it's a very bold step i cannot remember in the history of my career in a post nationalized world where any government has had the courage to go out and say we will privatize two public sector banks and i genuinely believe the correct model for india at this stage of our evolution is which are the banks i'm interested i'm interested in which are the banks you can you can suspect to on the hit list my my view is that the larger banks which is the state bank of india and the four other merged banks which are a total of 12 yeah. those banks uh, will not be privatized it will okay. be our, my sense is it will be out of the others others which are which are on the bottom line no? they are just struggling which are relatively the smaller ones and that was where you get best of both the worlds you get large banks continuing in the public sector consolidated mm-hmm. and out of the balance you test out the waters with a couple of them and, and there are you have it goes and you have any idea which psu is going to be privatized you prabhu as you just said that the stock market is very hot so i think <laughs> we should be making it hotter by <laughs> it doesn't make a difference to my life or <laughs> maybe yours because you are not into <laughs> those who are interested i am just trying to ask if which ps you can give that kind of money i am just trying to get the idea of raising the equal lakh crore rupees it has to come either through this investment privatization or i don't know from where demand generation extra gst will generate of hopefully they'll get more gst from 1 lakh 20 lakh crore to, to maybe 1 lakh 15000 crore maybe that is possible but i am just i mean you guys did you guys must be knowing which is the psu which is which is on the on the block So nobody knows, right? Because if we knew, then we should have also known this announcement would have been part of that stock. Nobody Because LIC, LIC, suddenly you find it's spending a lot of money on advertising. IPO, they have mentioned the budget anyway. 
IPO will be there in the budget that is. But again, I am saying that it, uh, what kind of demand this budget will be infrastructure of what kind all of you are talking about? Can you pin, pinpoint this is what the areas you need should be have the infrastructure development where you can generate demand and put more money in the hands of what I call the vitamin M, which money is required in the hands of people, which think all of you, but Vinu, you may be, or Chandraji, Chandraji, you tell me which, which, which kind of, what is the kind of infrastructure you're talking about? So, I mean, you, you saw that in the, in the budget, uh, she very clearly spelled out a lot of infrastructure focus on uh, both the rural as well as uh, the, you know, uh, the highways uh, on uh, uh, the, a huge focus on that, a huge focus on road building. And I think uh, that's, a, and it's happening uh, at a, the where you know where we see is the in the manner in which of course uh, it's happening the number is we are building almost a 40 kilometers uh, per day of, of highways which is a uh, which is a big improvement from where we were till today so that itself is a big uh, big area uh, uh, for wh which brings in demand and so at this juncture uh, most engines of the uh, of the economy are i i would I, as, as all of us know have been a, in a sort of a slowdown mode so, uh, so consumption demand, uh, consumption demand, be it the private investments as well as exports, and the onus of the demand cycle really falls uh, squarely on on public uh, public investment at this point in time, and that's what the government really is is, is has really done. I would think that uh, that's one area, which is the second thing that uh, the second thing that they have also talked about a lot is in terms of health infrastructure. Uh, when they talked about uh, spending on health, uh, and and I see a lot of rural uh, infrastructure building, both in terms of healthcare, health infrastructure, as well as other uh, social infrastructures that they have talked about uh, creating in the rural side. That would be a uh, that would be a, an important area to generate demand, and that also in, uh, the rural sector would needs to be uh, would need to be uh, uh, nurtured. And I think that's that's something which is going to be very very critical. Uh, I, I I really see uh, uh, on the uh, of the, these two to be very big areas: infrastructure as well as uh, this entire thing about uh, you know the rural rural infrastructure, and and all of this has a huge a multiplier effect. In generating demand for uh, multiple other sectors, the construction sector itself um, uh, uh, has a phenomenal multiplier effect. As also is a second most important uh, employment generating uh, sector. So I but see you this. You uh, spoke this, about this, health sector because if you take out thirty-five thousand crore rupees provided for the vaccine, and take out the water which is added into the health sector now, pani and whatnot, there are hardly an increase in the health sector infrastructure as it is the last year, two thousand six, four thousand crore rupees. That is because 35,000 rupees goes into, into because that is also little, they might add more. There are, in, but health, what we are talking about, rural infrastructure, again, I'm coming back to, because it depends on how much rural infrastructure you create. Manrega, you have reduced the amount, money from their hand, because money, a lot of money has been taken away from Manrega. And rural roads have been under construction, most of the people are doing. So, but rural infrastructure, there is no specific information coming out. Yes. Again, I'm going back to the intent direction of the budget is very well defined. But what is not defined is how it is going to be implemented. Promise performance of the government on various promises in the past has been very good. But when it comes to delivery on the infrastructure 40 kilometers per day, yes, that's a record. Nitin Gargadi has really done. He is on the highway himself every day. Plus he is the highway minister, not only highway minister, he is the highway industry, industry, mentally the highway on the highway all the time. But question arises, how to create demand? Because as I coming back to the basic, basic thing, by sociological background, because unless you reduce the gap between the rich and the poor, because ultimately upper middle class can't create excessive demand because they have more appetite for anything foreign rather than made in India is not happening. So how you create the indigenous demand by generating employment in, in, in lower income rates? So you have got 56% of services sector, which employs less than 15% of the labor force. You have 60% of agriculture, which gets only 15% of the national income. How these imbalances have to be corrected? Sanjeev? Prabhu, we don't have to go too far behind. Uh, look at the decade of the 2000s and uh, what investment in um, infrastructure at that time, those highways, airports, uh, uh, power generation, what that did Overall for demand, even on the consumer demand, the same middle class that you're talking about spent handsomely for us to grow nine, nine and a half percent for many years. 
it's really after that the entire infrastructure um, continued investment is what got stuck and that brought down brought us down to this economic slowdown and then the pandemic hit, has hit us so the uh, the answers are already there we just and and this does not require any uh, rocket science it's a question of doing the simple things but to your point of course there has to be good execution if there is no execution then it's only a strategy and a plan on paper but uh, we believe that the government is intent on this execution and what has changed compared to that decade is if you see over the last 2 years the overall rhetoric around the world led by the us on wanting an alternate manufacturing to china has become more and more loud and this is not a short term uh, political uh, ploy it seems to be quite consistent which means there is an opportunity for other countries of course southeast asian countries are also there to stand up to it but nobody has the manpower and the capacity that we do and that's where we have seen the government with its pli scheme announcement supporting exports uh, we have seen a number of these initiatives but uh, yes this will be a multi year effort and it requires very strong execution so let us so you, th you, th you think basically that there is a need for better execution this time if you have to get some kind of growth back on track very clearly because uh, i mean uh, you've been the critic so far in this discussion uh, as you're supposed to in your role asking uh, most of your questions about will the government be able to execute will they be able to divest will they be able to uh, uh, you know actually get on to the not only the road but also the high, the railway and spend that money productively in uh, uh, capex so yes it's all about execution now so since you asked me that i have not asked this question i'm asking you will this government be able to execute as efficiently as you expect maybe i am not in the government but uh, no, what but you have experience right? and if you, if i see the recent action uh, during the pandemic of how they've helped the uh, economy recover through the significant fiscal stimulus that came at multiple times and all the other benefits as well they have actually put their neck there on the line and executed so i'm hopeful that they will you see the topic for today is this budgeting for india's decade because we all of us expect that india is going to lead the economy world economy in the next one decade not in terms of size of the market but in terms of delivery system we have better system in india we have better execution we have better decision making processes A strong government. So when you talk forward, because one of the problem of deficit financing will be inflationary deficit, which is fallout of any deficit financing. I'm not. Are you are you watching some kind of a inflationary trend in the market already? As I have done it, Uday. Uh, Prabhu, on you know, in one of the important points is when the government is going for a relatively higher deficit than what was envisaged. one of the most important things at that point of time is a very close coordination between the government and the reserve bank so the fiscal policy and monetary policy have to work very closely together to ensure that while the transformation is underway as the government starts borrowing higher there is no crowding out for investment financing required by the private sector we have the rbi policy on 5th of february that is tomorrow i think mm -hmm. that will be a very important aspect to watch about how the government and rbi are while keeping the independence of monetary policy but also looking at the national priorities of growth in while looking at inflation that balance is going to be crucial for fiscal and monetary to deliver a reasonable range bound interest rate scenario i don't say that interest rates have to be fixed at a price but they have to be in reasonable range so that investment decisions taken by businesses are in a more stable interest rate environment and not subject to volatility if that happens infrastructure investment happens real assets happen on the ground then you have got an answer for inflation but in the interim government and rbi need to work very deftly no when you are right in the beginning of some other statement modi government has assured stability of policy not if you go by yeah. this budget and if this continues for the next one decade we are talking about decade long perspective now all of you have got it you have got assurance that policy will be stable there won't be changes tinkering with the policy all the time 
that gives you much more leeway and long term planning to invest in the future sector whatever you want to do when you want to us giving this assurance that there won't be any changes in any kind of fiscal policy or monetary policies except tinkering with some time how much investment you see in your own area during the next one decade we see significant investment in our industry for two reasons one is capacity expansion indian exports are growing i think led by bajaj followed by tvs and uh, india is becoming competitive in exports the change over to the electric uh, transportation era that will take place we will be investing very heavily so will others be doing the same thing whether it's bajaj or hero so i think you're going to see a lot of investment from the transport sector both to meet the demand as well as to meet the requirements of sustainability and i want to make one point when you have infrastructure investment as the main deficit you're going to have less inflation than in the previous years when they have had revenue deficits which go into consumption then which go into inflation which also go into buying more foreign goods as you said so it revenue deficits have a serious evil effect like eating too much sugar or carbohydrates but Anji, capital what, investment what is, is like eating dal and you just tell us the next decade of your company in your area how it is going to grow after the assurance of a stable policy at the level of the central government you know prabhu in the in the last decade itself uh, across uh, financial services companies we have grown between 20 and 35% uh, cagr of course we are uh, larger today than what we were a decade ago uh, but with this kind of a stable growth oriented policy i see no reason why we should not see strong double digit growth continuing through the next decade and you what are your point view on this your member so many members you have got how much extra investment do you expect in the total in the country as percentage of current investment capital expenditure uh you know uh, uh, as as you know private investment has been muted but uh, you know uh, what was one looking forward to in the budget was a, a sort of a stable a sort of a taxation and a, a regime and a stable policy regime so many of the sectors are looking up pretty strongly there is a there is good feedback coming from the construction sector construction equipment sector the mineral based sector there is a positive uh, uh, positive growth coming from the mineral based sector pretty upbeat the capital goods sector the machine tool sector they have been also very up, 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 uh, positive the auto sector uh, the auto, uh, generally has been pretty much uh, all, all, all right i would say uh, 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 so there are many sectors which have been actually doing exceedingly well so if you look at the results of some of the companies in the construction equipment sector etc they've really been booming actually the reports are very very strong higher than what it was uh, compared to 2019 forget 2020 so uh, so so there are sectors which are very strong now with the stability in the budget in terms of both, both the and the direction of reforms and and if the interest rate remains stable i would imagine that we would soon see capacity utilization going upwards of 75% uh, very soon and 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 uh, private sector would come back onto the table to invest you see i'm coming to the last question on this because vaccination is very important for reviving the economy because attendance in the offices was 50% 60% i don't know what is the percentage of uh, people coming to your work station now are there how many people are coming back to your uh, companies so first of all prabhu on the bank branches it is an essential service for through the entire lockdown period the bank branches were functional at 90% plus and therefore the entire branch banking side is fully functional at the formal offices the attendance that is the corporate offices and head offices the attendance is still low at an average it's about 30 to 40% as things stand today when you your company what is the percentage of total workforce which is coming See, we are basically a manufacturing company and therefore we will be 100% of manufacturing people are on the floor since august and now more and more engineers and design offices people are coming back sales people have been on the field so more than 75% are actually coming to work and this will i think with vaccination and confidence improve to 100% it will never come back to fully 100 because we all learned that you can work from home flexible working will be a way of life 
maybe it'll come back to 90 or 85 but i think offices will find that today we are able to give people greater freedom to work from home and uh, that is something that new that we have learned during this uh, crisis and you your business has where you require personal interaction with the people so what is the, what is the, your experience till now it is back to say 70% 80% again uh, prabhu nakes as far as branches is concerned insurance or nbfc we would be 90% plus as far as our other offices are concerned uh, one of the things we have very clearly learned is that certain roles can definitely be work from home so uh, i would say as of today about 15 to 20% uh, of those roles are at home and of the remaining 80% nearly 60 65% are at work so uh, and we rotate we rotate so people come a few days and then they work a day from home so that we keep enough distancing still uh, in the office but uh, yeah the work goes on at full speed you see as far as covid concerns india is one of the country which has handled very well which was that that day we have come back to normalcy almost much faster and developing the vaccine also much faster So I would like to know because government has set some parameters. I know that the, how we will get the vaccination first. But as as the industry leaders, don't you think you would have also taken a lead of suggesting the government? Okay, we at our own level vaccinate our own employees and uh, put them back at confidence level because could have been done. I don't know any initiative the CII took to suggest to the government. Okay, leave it to us to procure the vaccination and vaccinate our employees. yeah i think uh, at cii we have created a task force under the leadership of mr narendran the president designate who takes charge as president after my term therefore in order to ensure continuity we felt the best way is to have a full fledged task force on the whole area of vaccination it is closely interacting with government including giving a number of recommendations of how distribution can be expedited and i'll request my colleague chandrajit who's closely involved with this exercise to give what are the specific steps uh, as cii which we are uh, uh, dialoguing with government chandrajit no i'm asking individually because uday quota ke chairman and many no, my, my my view my view is, is government i don't know the procedure therefore i'm asking you that no, no, my, after because my, my, my view is what? my view is very clear i think the government has followed a certain path of vaccination first the health workers then the people about 50 i would really like to see this speed up even faster yeah tell me is is it advise you brief no, no, thank uh, th- you know uh, uh, points uh, 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 two points one is one which you uh, actually mentioned uh, one of the recommendations of cii through this vaccine task force uh, which has uh, in its membership a large number of uh, you know different types of people one is of course uh, the vaccine manufacturers themselves uh, the healthcare pro- uh, providers are involved in it the cold storage are involved in it dr guleria is co-chairing it uh, from, uh, so and and we have been uh, in discussion both with the government with niti aayog etc one of the things that we have actually said that uh, uh, like the healthcare workers etc are extremely important and they should be vaccinated of course as a priority but from the point of view of livelihood and 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 to create to create to creep livelihood uh, it is very important that even uh, industrial workers etc they are also vaccinated with priority so that is a very strong recommendation of cii the second aspect uh, b- 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 is uh, 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 basically to see how private sector can come in so the private sector with its uh, prop, uh, with its uh, you know uh, with its com- competence to actually really take this uh, government effort further to see a large number of uh, of, of the population are actually vaccinated so uh, we need to open this up to the private sector uh, to partner with the government and that's a very strong uh, demand and the request uh, that cii has in fact there is a letter and a and a note uh, to this effect Uh, which has gone from uday the, as the president of cii uh, to the prime minister of the uh, of india uh, so that's a that's a very important thing and 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 we are actually at this point in time extremely happy to see the phenomenal stress which you also mentioned uh, in the in the in the budget which has been given to vaccination and i think that is one going to be one of the key areas i mean if we are going to spend 35000 cro- crores to va- uh, in the vaccine program it is going to be one of those b- booster doses as one sees in many of the stress sectors like uh, you know we if we see uh, p- uh, movement of people really taking coming back to the country 
You see, this recovery of the economy depends much more. You come out of the fear of COVID. That's what you see, because all of you as industry has performed well. Exports have done very well in this country now. So what I'm trying to raise is the involvement of private sector in the distribution vaccination of India has, is, is not visible at the moment because you are, as Uday has pointed, we will go by the government procedure. But government of Modi, particularly Prime Minister Modi, is open to more ideas and ideas. How to make it fast? Because we have the production capacity. That's not, we don't, we are suffering for the production capacity. We are only limited by the distribution capacity, vaccination capacity. The role of the private sector becomes much more important. Each employer gets as one lakh employee, two lakh employees. They can also be vaccinated at the same time if the supply is available. I don't want, I'm not suggesting that you bypass the priority sector. That is the point I was trying to make there. My point, Prabhu, is that if you look at supply, from what I understand from Serum Institute, they've got 50 million doses. Some of them expire somewhere around April, May. In fact, they are very keen to distribute the doses faster than the current pace. So supply is not an issue at this stage, at least. So it's a distribution issue. That's why I'm saying private sector, you could have, for example, ordered 1 million doses for your employees. Yeah. Because there's a wastage also. If your average yeah. is 7 per day, it means 30% of life of this vaccine is very limited. If yes. you don't do the same day, it dies. So that's what I'm saying. Why don't you still get active as a private sector? Okay, give us permission to use our vaccine by ourselves and just vaccine travel implies we are willing to get vaccinated. I, I, I think at CII, we have made recommendations for private sector to participate in the distribution. But I think the issue from the government point of view is that they want to ensure equitable distribution rather than preferences to A or B or C category. Other than health workers, when I mean A or B or C category, I mean large corporates getting a benefit versus the small scale sector. They want to ensure that the distribution is equitable. That's what the government seems to be focused on. I'm not getting the nuance. I'm talking the health of India is much more important for better functioning or better, better productivity of the private sector industry. As the economics, they say, if other things remain the same, it means you don't disturb the equitable distribution and priority sector. If you have the supply there, because I, I see there no shortage of supply in this country, only the machinery, they are activating most of them, which has been activated by this place, is still 70% average all over India, which is improving every day. But could you, it is in, in the interest of industry, because I'm a little surprised because Great. government should have involved. They are open to ideas, again, I'm saying. So I'm making as a newspaper journalist, the private sector should also be very active in demanding that, okay, we should also be involved as per the government line got guidelines to vaccinate our own employees. So, Prabhu, we are fully supportive of this. We believe private sector getting more active in distribution is something we strongly recommend and support. And if that can be broader communicated with an eminent journalist and media platform like yours, that would certainly be something we, give, we would very much appreciate. We are frontline workers, but we are not given priority anyway. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much for all of your journey here. I think it's going to be a very good decade of excellence and development. And I hope what you, what you think, infrastructure development will happen and India will grow and become a more international power than all of us think. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.